Hello class, in this video we will be covering 8.1, the fundamental counting principle. So number one says the, or I'm sorry, there are 11 problems total in this particular section. So for the first problem, it says a restaurant offers seven appetizers and eight main courses. In how many ways can a person order a two course meal? And so essentially what you're doing is you're just multiplying seven times eight, okay? Or eight times seven. And so when I take that product, I get 56. So there are 56 ways a person can order a two course meal. Um, essentially the way it works is if you have appetizer one, you could get appetizer one with main course one, main course two, main course three, main course four, main course five, main course six, main course seven, or main course eight. So with just one appetizer, you have eight different choices. So for each of these seven appetizers, you have eight choices for each one. So that's the same thing as saying eight plus eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Well, another way to write repeated addition is just to write it as multiplication. There are seven eights that I am adding up. So it is equivalent to just multiplying seven times eight. So I just wanted to explain the reasoning behind the multiplication. Um, from here on out, we'll just be multiplying. So for number two, it says a sales representative can take one of two different routes from city B to city F. And any one of seven different routes from city F to city M. How many different routes can she take from city B all the way to city M going through the city F, okay? So here you have city B, here you have city F, and here you have city M. And there are two different ways to get to city F from B. And then apparently there are seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ways to get from city F to city M. Um, and so again, if you take this route, then you could take any one of these seven, but if you take that route, you could still take any one of these seven. So it's seven plus seven, which is 14, or you can just multiply the number of options together and you get the same 14. So there are 14 possible routes there. Now an ice cream store sells, and this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated because the more things that I add there, um, the harder it is for us to be drawing these diagrams and conceptualize them. So with here, luckily it's just three, three and five, which are small numbers, so I can talk about it. Um, but let's say they had 15 different drinks and 20 different, or seven different sizes and 20 different flavors. Th that would be a whole lot more complicated to draw, okay? So we are gonna use that multiplying principle there. So it says uh, an ice cream store sells three um, drinks in three sizes and five flavors. In how many ways can a customer order a drink? So we just multiply all the different options together. So you have three options for drinks, three options for sizes, and then five options for flavors. So that means a total of 45 um, different ways that you can uh, a customer can order a drink. Now for number four, it says a restaurant offers the following limited lunch menu. The main courses, there are three options, ham, chicken, and fish. Vegetables, there are two options, corn or green beans. Beverages, there are five options, coffee, tea, milk, soda, or shakes. And then for desserts, there's three options, cake, pie, or sherbet. So it says, if one item is selected from each of the four groups, in how many ways can a meal be produced or ordered? So essentially, we're just taking the number of options and multiplying them all together. So three for the main courses, times two for the vegetables, times five for the beverages, and times three for the desserts. That gives us a total of 90 ways to make or order a meal. Um, for number five, it says a person can order a new car with a choice of 10 possible colors, with or without air conditioning, with or without automatic transmission, with or without power windows, 
and with or without a CD player. In how many different ways can a new car be ordered with regard to these options? So for the first option, there's 10 possibilities. For the second option, we're talking about the air conditioning and there's only two, with or without. For the automatic transmission, there's only two options. For the power windows, there's only two options. And for the CD player, there's only two options. So if I multiply all of these options together, we get a total of 160 different ways that a new car can be ordered. For number six, it says you are taking a multiple choice test that has eight questions. Each of the questions has three answer choices with one answer, one correct answer per question. If you select one of these three choices for each question and leave nothing blank, how many ways can you answer the questions? So essentially what we're doing is there's three options for question one, three options for question two, same for question three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, instead of multiplying all these threes together, you can use the symbols for um, exponents. Just like multiplication is the symbols that we use instead of repeated addition, exponents are the symbols we use instead of repeated multiplication. So instead of typing all of this in your calculator, you could just type three to the power eight. And it's the same thing as multiplying all these threes together. And you do end up with the same value, 6,561 ways. Um, so number seven says, the local seven digit telephone numbers in city A have a 017 as the first three digits. How many different telephone numbers are possible in city A? Well, the possible digits that you have for phone numbers are these, and that makes 10 different options. But remember, it says that the, the telephone numbers are seven digits. And for this particular city, they all start with 017. So essentially, if you've got seven digits, right, these three are 017 automatically because of the city that you're living in. So it's really only the last four digits that you need to find the combinations for, okay? So I have 10 options for each one of these places. So 10 for the first place, 10 for the second place, 10 for the third, and 10 for the fourth. Again, we can rewrite that as 10 to the fourth power, and it does come out to be 10,000. So there's a possibility of 10,000 phone numbers created having 017 as the first three digits. Now for number eight, um, it says here that license plates in a particular state display four letters followed by two numbers. How many different license plates can be manufactured for this state? Well, for the letters A through Z, there's 26 of them. And for the numbers from zero to nine, there's actually 10 numbers. So if it has to have four letters followed by two numbers, then the possibility for the first letter is 26 possibilities, 26 possibilities for the second, 26 possibilities for the third, and 26 possibilities for the fourth letter. Followed by the two numbers, you've got 10 possibilities for the first number, 10 possibilities for the second number. And so if I rewrite this in exponent form, there are one, two, three, four 26s. So 26 to the fourth power, there's only two 10s, so it's 10 to the second power. And I did type all of this in the calculator and it gave me this really large number here, um, 45,697,600. And so I just typed in all of that response here in this box. So that's the possible number of license plates. Moving on to the last three problems for this section, we have a stock can go up, go down, or stay unchanged. So that's three possibilities of what could happen. How many possibilities are there if you own six stocks? So that means three possibilities for each of the six stocks. We know we can write that as three to the power six. 
which turns out to be 729. Um, number 10 says a password contains five digits, such as, this is just an example, 17467. How many different passwords can be formed? So you've got five digits here, and we already know what the numbers, you have 10 possibilities, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you have 10 possibilities for each of those seven digits, or five digits, I'm sorry, each of the five digits, which is represented by 10 to the fifth power, which does come out to be 100,000. It's not 100,000. Yes, it is. It's 100,000. The comma goes there. And so it's 100,000. Uh, finally, for number 11, it says, in order to develop a more appealing cheeseburger, a franchise uses taste tests with six different buns eight different cheeses, three types of lettuce, and two types of tomatoes. If the taste tests were done one at one restaurant by one tester, who takes 10 minutes to eat each cheeseburger? Approximately how long would it take for the tester to eat all possible cheeseburgers? So for the possible combinations of burgers, we took all of the options, so six different buns times eight different cheeses times three types of lettuce times two types of tomatoes. So all together, that makes 288 possible burgers that need to be tested, okay? Now, this tester can eat one burger in 10 minutes, so one burger per 10 minutes. However, it's asking us how many it can eat in hours, okay? So then what I need to do is I need to convert this into hours, okay? So what I did was I multiplied by the conversion from hours to minutes. So since minutes is at the bottom, the 60 minutes goes at the top so that the minutes can cancel. And then I have hour down here. So what I did was, is I did one times 60 is 60, 10 times one is 10. And then when I simplify this fraction, 60 divided by 10 is actually just six. So I end up with six burgers per hour. So that's how many burgers per hour that this person can, uh, can eat, okay? So we're gonna take the number of burgers total to be tested and divide it by his rate, which is six burgers per hour, okay? Now, remember, dividing by six burgers per hour, if I put this underneath here, that's like one hour, right? So when I, multiply by fractions, you actually, I mean, I'm sorry, when you divide fractions, you actually multiply by the reciprocal. So I change the division to a multiplication, and then I flip that fraction over. Um, so one hour is at the top and the six burgers is at the bottom, which makes sense because you want the burgers to cancel and you just want to be left with hours, right? But when I do this multiplication, 288 times one is 288, and if I divide that by six, that's where the 48 came from, okay? So it takes this person, this one tester, 48 hours to test 288 possible burgers. So that's like a whole week, a little bit more, six days a week at an eight-hour shift, right, um, of eating burgers. Oh, my God, I can't imagine eating burgers for eight hours. But anyway, um, so that is the end of this section and I will see you guys in the next one.